when was the last time you played poker? Um, oh my God, I haven't played. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at it. I have uh, probably like five years ago. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to Roger Cumble, the director of Beautiful Disaster, which is coming to theaters on April 21st, 2023, and the VOD on May 2nd, 2023. I'm going to talk to him right now. While you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Awesome. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Roger Cumble, the director and co-writer of Beautiful Disaster, which comes to theaters on April 21st, 2023, and the VOD on May 2nd, 2023. It is a romantic comedy drama that stars two very unlikely uh, people coming together over some very interesting shared interests, and it's a beautiful disaster. It kind of works out perfectly. He also directed one of my favorite movies, like a movie that I watched growing up, Cruel Intentions, which I loved. So I'm very excited to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, David. Of course, of course. So the first question, like, how did you get involved in this film? I saw you were a co-writer. I wasn't sure if you adapted the story or if, like, you you know, saw the script, made some changes, and then, you know, decided to direct. Oh, no, I actually, um, um, I, I found the book. I was, uh, mm -hmm. there was this uh, app, Goodreads, which is like how I usually uh, find books I like to read. And there, it was like on the top of um, all these kind of lists, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I never heard of the book. And I, I, um, I grabbed the book and I read it and, and I was like, this checks a lot of boxes for me in, in terms of something I'm looking to do. And, uh, um, but it was like, the book was like 10 years old and, and it was like, it's called turn around. It, it, it was buried in a mountain of fees over at a studio. It, it was basically dead. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I got the rights from the author um, and but I just decided to not look at any old, old materials from it, and I just gambled and I just specked it. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it for free. I wrote my own version of it uh, on my own, and then um, I went to the studio who I made my last film with um, after we collided, and they said if you make it for a certain amount of money and go to Bulgaria, uh, we'll go. We'll do it. So I that's basically the short version of that so uh that's that's how it happened that is awesome i love you know, i love a few things about that one i love that you kind of like took it on yourself you're like i want to make this film i'm going to figure out how to get it done and then you just kind of like by your bootstraps and will just kind of like made this thing happen that's amazing thank you yeah and i love so i was gonna bring it up later but i love that this film was filmed in bulgaria i i had no idea right i think that was uh, amazing like i was looking at the credits and i was like where was this film and it says fully filmed in bulgaria so how did like how did that work out had you filmed in bulgaria before and how did it do you make it look no. like so seamless um that's through um um a great production designer Britt dowdy who i worked with on suits for like um five years um so i knew she i knew from working with her and cheating um um uh, Toronto for New York, um, and and uh, uh, Joshua Reese, my uh, DP. You know, you you work with as a team, and that's what you do in filmmaking. You cheat. Uh, so <laughs> movie magic, I believe, is what it's called. It's movie magic. Uh, yeah, uh, and and uh, Brian Pitt, my producer, like they had they had an infrastructure there so they they had they had done a couple films out in bulgaria and you know you just look at enough location photos and you're like this could work this could work this could work this could work you know and you just go on a bunch of location scouts you know the trickiest thing is with the um with the it's covid and with the extras you know and knowing you want kind of um, um a diverse uh college you know so really the challenge was was i i had said like i want to find uh, um an ethnic group mm -hmm. of 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 college students so put up to go to university of sophia and and find every you know um ethnic looking <laughs> student and usually they're from some africa mm -hmm. hire them and almost like surround our actors in every scene with them so it looks like we're in Sacramento at a college, you know? Those are the tricks you have to do as a filmmaker to get away with it. 
Yeah, no, I, that's that's really interesting. Like you know, the, the whole filming in COVID internationally, I was I was unsure how you would do that. Like, that's that's really great that you kind of like were able to, I don't know, get in house kind of. I mean, get it at least in country, so that it was probably easier to get them. That's a that's a very smart way to do it. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, if you're you're lens, you know, you're using certain lenses, and you're hopefully your film's good enough that they're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, the the effects at least were good enough. I didn't I didn't notice. Like, I was trying to f figure out where in America it was because I think it had a nice, you know, you had the map which helped place it, and then Vegas, you had the the stock shots that really kind of set you in. Yeah. So uh, I think that that was a good kind of like use of movie magic for this. Thanks. Thank you. And you know, it's a it's a rom it's a romantic dramedy rom com kind of film. The you know the the two leads are crucial. I know you worked with Dylan Sprouse before, but uh, how did you get him involved in this? And how did you get Virginia Gardner on this as well? Dylan, um, I had written the script, and uh, we were in the we were in the process of casting, and I was like a little nervous because like uh, I was like, did I write a character that's uncastable? Where you had to have this great looking. Brad Pitt Fight Club guy that could pull off the comedic elements as well and the wit and all that. And then I got a text from him one night and saying, I love this script. And and I was like, for what part? Um, and he's like, Travis. And I'm like, can you get in this kind of shape? And he goes, yeah, I've done it before. And I said, shit, come, come, where are you? And he goes, I'm flying flying to LA from like Hungary. Um, and, and I said, come in, come, come to the studio, like as soon as you land or whatever. And, um, we made a deal with him. Like we got him into training, like the next day mm -hmm. he was, he was on a diet and trainers and all that. Virginia, we met in the casting process and, uh, Bonnie Zane who had done plays of mine and all that. Um, I just trusted her. And Dylan and I and Ginny, we had like a lunch together and she came over, um, they came over to my house for dinner with my wife and all that. And, and, you know, it's a little bit of a leap of faith, but like once we all got to Bulgaria and we were rehearsing the, the, the fact that I had, I had control of the script cause I wrote it. Um, I'm, and I come from theater. I, I was able to rewrite it and, 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 and workshop the script with them. So, uh, we could tailor the scenes to their abilities and 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 make sure the chemistry landed for sure. And uh, O oh, to be young again to be like, oh, I'm gonna get into like fighting shape and then be able to do that. That sounds right? amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But I did I did love uh, his character. His he like kind of hit the right notes. It was like he's a bad boy, but for, like sweet also but definitely like cocky and confident i think uh and, and the, their, their their chemistry together was a lot of fun to see they were both very very different characters i think it's kind of a, the, the the nucleus of this film so I, I feel like the casting was really well done thank you yeah it's uh it, thanks and um one other person that i like actually kind of like yelled for joy at the screen when I saw Brian Austin Green as the father. Like, how did he get involved in this? I, I like had to stop the film. I was like, is that Brian Austin Green? I looked it up. I was like, oh my God, it is. Right. Yeah. You know, um, that was um, um, the studio. Uh, um, you know, we were just going through the list and, and, and we were like, what about, what about Brian? And I actually, I like Brian from, you know, he was on the show. I think it was called Wedding Band. Mm -hmm. um and i loved him in it and and i actually saw the the 90210 the the meta one they did a season of like two years ago i thought he was great in it and and i thought and it's so unexpected um that turn he plays in this that it, it would just add to what we were going for um that i was like let's do it let's this you know uh that why not um I, he was a joy it was just a uh a, a, a kind of fun piece of casting and and kind of unexpected yeah definitely and i think you know one of the things you forget about all those people that you uh, I, I grew up watching is like yeah, they're right? they've been doing it for so long and they're really talented like yeah just because right? you saw them yeah. in, when they were young like he did a fantastic job thank you yeah he was great and he was a pleasure to work with
And uh, kind of related to, you know, my love of Cruel Intentions, I bought the soundtrack when I was a kid. I listened to that soundtrack all the time. I love the music in this film as well. Uh, did you have any say in the in the music or did you kind of like have someone pick the right tracks? It had a very kind of upbeat soundtrack, which I think is, you know, perfect for this type of a film. Yeah, no, I did. Um, I uh, Thank you. Um, no, it's a, it's the same process where you literally are, are, are um, you know, um, it's a different time now mm -hmm. uh, where with Cruel Intentions, we were working with like Virgin Records and, you know, everything is very, uh, you know, there's a lot of money being thrown at it. And this day, it's like little money being thrown at it, which is also fun because you get to be even more creative. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, where um, um, what was fun about this was I, I was kind of like, I was able to hold on to one song, which in my era was this um, song that was recorded by Madness um, called um, It Must Be Love, which they play over the montage. Um, um, and uh, we re, you know, we got the rights of the song and we re recorded it um, with, um, um, and, uh, you know, it still has the same in infectious kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, um, we use this um, woman, Taylor Conrad, uh, uh, for love team. So we're able to hire artists that we like too. So you're, you know, even like uh, though the budgets change, you can still be equally creative. Yeah, and it must be kind of fun that you get to, you know, like you said, you were working with big record companies before. That was that must have been fun in one respect, but this way it seems like you get to kind of really kind of tailor. The songs that you want and the and the feel that you want and it probably requires a little more legwork from you but it probably also feels more i don't know rewarding or maybe more personal absolutely yeah um and i'm glad you brought up the montage i love the polaroids during the credits those were a lot of fun is that were those like scenes that you had filmed beforehand or was it always kind of like this idea that you would have little like flashes of what happened to them during the credits um no it was um it was kind no i knew we were going to do that um we it was kind of a half rap party <laughs> half um um we we just um we were all it was kind of a half covid lockdown so we were all on the like the same floor mm -hmm. at the hotel and we had this kind of um uh kind of a suite uh where we, it was like our our rec room so we just ordered some props um like a wedding cake and all that and we had a to-do list of shots we needed um so um we just went around to different places and we made sure we got a bunch of shots and that was kind of our rap night i love that it's like rap but you still have a little bit of work to do but it's really fun yeah. like you get to just get yeah. to let loose be silly so it kind of yes. it fits perfectly <laughs> oh good um, so I know we have very limited time. I'm going to switch to, I call it the lightning round. They're just lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Okay. First question is, have you ever been to like an MMA fight or like an underground fight? No. All right. Uh, next question. When was the last time you were in Vegas? Two years ago. And did you win big? Lost big? Yeah. In between? No, I don't gamble. <laughs> <laughs> One of the rare people that goes to Vegas and doesn't gamble. <laughs> um, when was the last time you played poker? Um, oh, my God. I haven't played poker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at it. I have uh, probably like five years ago. Oh, excellent. <laughs> well, I also am very bad at gambling, and I try to stay away from it so I completely understand um what is the strangest place that you've met someone that you would be like developed a friendship or a relationship with um i uh, god i got uh, you, you can choose not to answer that's perfectly fine as well i'm gonna just stammer through it all right no worries at all uh and the last question is have you ever gotten into a fight like a fist fight. Second grade. Oh, wow. I, won. I won. I'm one to know. 
that's a great record. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> you should, thank you. You should have played. Uh, you should have played Travis's, you know, trainer or something for this. I should have. <laughs> All right, so the uh, the film is out uh, on April 21st, 2023, and coming to VOD on May 2nd, 2023. You're out promoting it, getting the word out. I'm sure you have other projects in the works. So after people see Beautiful Disaster, what can they look for next from you? Uh, possibly a sequel coming out next year. Oh, there we go. A, a, a new, Another Beautiful Disaster, we'll, we'll call it. Our Beautiful Disaster 2, Beautiful Wedding. Oh, there we go. All right. That sounds good. Well, that, that sounds amazing. The film is a beautiful disaster. It comes out on in theaters on April 21st, 2023, and on VOD on May 2nd, 2023. This is Roger Cumble, the director and co-writer. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. That was Roger Cumble, the director and writer of Beautiful Disaster, which comes to theaters on April 21st, 2023, and on VOD on May 2nd, 2023. It is a romantic comedy drama that stars two very, very different characters in a situation that is strange but also strangely works if you liked this interview please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you thank you